Hello, everyone. I'm Wang Ying from Peking University Stomatology School. Today, I would like to bring my best regards to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well at home and in your office. Today, I will share a case about a severe tissue defect in aesthetic zone. This patient is 28 years old, non-smoker. His left central incisor needs to be extracted due to trauma history and severe periodontal disease. From this picture, we can see the papilla height is somehow、uh, good compared to the navel tooth.、Uh, he has thick bile type, but due to the infection,、uh, has severe tissue defect. Poor oral hygiene and non-symmetrical space, but he refused orthodontic treatment. The CBCD analysis showed severe horizontal and vertical bone loss, and unfortunately, we can see the middle side of lateral incisor here has a more than two thirds of bone defect. Somehow, relatively high alveolar bone level on palatal side. Here showed the ideal position of implant and augmented bone. For this patient, what would be the scenario? What, when, and how to do? Of course, he needs non-surgical periodontal treatment, tooth extraction, complicated bone augmentation, soft tissue graft maybe twice, implant placement, provisional crown to shaping the soft tissue, and a final crown. Uh, as our background knowledge, we know that if we are facing severe bone defect, we have to do several steps, several invasive procedure for the patient. But for this patient, I would like to to have a new protocol, and、uh, the idea to support my protocol is that if we maintain the space for the soft tissue and augmentation.、Uh, Would like to have a predictable result, and we are going to reduce invasive procedures. That is good for the patient. So、uh, that、uh, comes up the、uh, new protocol. During the extraction, we use some、um, soft tissue ma management, and、uh, we when we do implant placement, we can combine the bone augmentation. So here we only have two invasive steps. So this is this is a、uh, tooth extraction. After the extraction, we can see the palatal wall、uh, and the apical positioned gingival margin and exposed root surface of lateral incisor. After the extraction, we use a micro titanium plate. To maintain the space as the labial wall of the socket, to cover the whole area, we use free gingival graft. That is 11 days after tooth extra extraction. It is uneventful, and、uh, we can see the gradual、uh, epithelia creeping to the center of the area. This is six months after tooth extraction. Uh, from another CBCT analysis, we can see the medium density of tissue here. We know it is、uh, under the micro、uh, titanium plate. It is woven bone or connective tissue. To let it、uh, let it、uh, have a better mineralization, I let the patient、uh, heal、uh, for another three months. That is re-entry. We can see here the connective tissue and the woven bone. An inspiring result of this patient, we can see the new bone formation at the middle root surface of the lateral incisor. We have already scraping all the soft tissue, but here still have some red colored tissue. It is very solid. It is a new bone formation. So we can see,、uh, we can put the implant at right 3D position, and we、uh, during the same time we put a healing abutment and、uh, another new microplate to maintain the space. We、uh, use bone substitute by us here to augment the 
defects and another collagen membrane to cover the whole area. From the occlusion view, we can see the position of the implant, and we can see how firmly, how uh, how can we maintain the space by the titanium material. This is before implant placement, and this is wound closure on the day of implant placement. Unfortunately, after 20 days of implant placement, we can see the partial exposure of micro titanium plate. What to do for this kind of situation? From the uh, systematic review, we know that 27% of volume will be lost than non-exposed -expo area. But for this case, if we do another uh, surgery, it is, will do harmful for the implant and the bone. So I just uh, sterilize the area, use uh, chlorhexidine, and let the patient uh, build up oral hygiene, daily oral hygiene. This is five and a half months after the healing. I decided to do another free gingival graft for this patient to cover the soft tissue defect. Here we cut the scar and make a, a apical positioned uh, uh, flap and remove the micro titanium plate. We uh, get another free gingival from the pallet and put on the top of the defect. This is healing after one and a half, mo half months. Now we deliver the, the provisional crown to shaping the gingival margin. Another CBCT analysis to do uh, have done, um, we can see the augmented bone under titanium microplate. Of course, uh, here we've already removed the micro titanium plate, but still we can see the new bone formation. And it is inspiring to see the new bone at the middle of lateral incisor. That is final crown and smile. Um, now let's look at the pros and the cons of this uh, consequence. We get the gingival margin, uh, good gingival margin level and the mesial papilla. But unfortunately, due to the um, free gingival uh, graft, uh, we have an incompatible color of gingival uh, at uh, the facial um, part. And the distal papilla is an ideal. This is previous and present. We can figure out uh, how the bone volume alteration during these uh, CBCT analysis. Here we can come to the conclusions that micro titanium plate can be flexibly applied in different steps. Uh, we can add effective intervention into every traumatic procedure. Successful tissue regeneration needs predictable space maintaining. Thank you very much for your kind listening.